So you drove out here from Texas to attend USC for theater, dramatic arts, mm -hmm. but now you've focused a lot on writing. Yeah. Where did that shift come in? I mean, it's hard to make it as an actor out here. It's really hard. Um, and I knew that I wanted to write. I just didn't know how to tell the stories. And I think that this is something that's inherently different in men and women and, and I, this this could be just me but women when they don't know how to do something i find that they tend to try to educate them, sir, themselves first before they they take the leap and do it and that may be a good thing that may be a bad thing i, I don't know but that's that's my particular process i find that a lot of men are able to just fake it till you make it and just wing it um, i always get what's called imposter syndrome so for me, um, I had, you know, obviously for, at that point had, had failed with the children's book. You know, when I first started writing um, the Baltimore School of Charm, which is what launched my screenwriting career, um, I hadn't been published yet. That, that came literally six weeks after I'd started the UCLA Extension Writers Program. So I was in, I was in a class with, with this professor, or, uh, I'm sorry, adjunct professor, uh, Justin Trevor Winters. Yes. Uh, he's fantastic, yes. really great guy. We were, we're still friends, but he, was, he taught me my first screenwriting class. So, you know, as an actor, I knew, how to, I knew how to break a script down. I knew what the beats were, but you know, you never, I never looked at it from the writing standpoint. And I decided this was something that I really wanted to try my hand at. I really, I had a bunch of stories that I had wanted to tell and I didn't quite know how to tell them. So I did what I always do. I started to educate myself on how to do that. So when I got into Justin's class at UCLA, um, and again, this is the extension program. Um, Great program. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, again, uh, this is, this is, I can fully credit my education there and the experience of winning their screenwriting program to propelling me to where I am today. Um, absolutely, their, their instructors are top notch. Um, but I was in Justin's class and you know, we're developing the scripts that we wanna start working on. And I had two, I had two, that I really, I had two stories that I'd really wanted to tell. Um, one of them was the Baltimore School of Charm and the other one is a feature called Daruma, which we will be uh, crowdfunding for in October. We've got it cast, we've got you know, the support of a bunch of organizations and we have Alex Yellen, the director attached. Um, but I ultimately decided to start telling the story of the Baltimore School of Charm. Um, and what's interesting about this story is that it, it happened, I started to tell it before the Me Too movement really took off. Um, it deals with you know, domestic violence and you know, it has a very strong female lead. Um, it's set in the 50s, it's inspired by my grandmother's struggle. Um, but this, is, this became a very personal story and when Justin was you know, uh, teaching me you know, and coaching me through you know, what script to pick, he told me, you know, pick the script that you wanna get in bed with for the longest because you're gonna be wrestling with it for a long time. So, and I find that my first screenplay w was The Baltimore School of Charm and that was the hardest one because I didn't quite know how all the pieces fit together. So I worked on that script for about three years um, before it finally got to its final state and the one where it, it won the competition. Um, and that happened right around when the Me Too movement was happening. So it, it coincided very nicely with, uh, with the current climate. How long, I'm sorry, did it take you to write the script? Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. And so was the first draft was how long? Um, I think it was probably about 110 pages. Its final state is probably, I think, 97 or 98 pages now. So, Was it one of these things where you were able to just get it all down in a messy form and then work on it, or did it take some time? It you took said some it was time. Difficult? It took a lot of time. Um, you know, this is, this is where you start working. For me, my process was figuring out the beats and the characters, and I, you know, I know a lot of people don't put a lot of stock into the competitions, but I do think that as a new screenwriter, as someone who's finding your way and finding your process, if you can afford to enter them, it's invaluable because what will happen is you will get reader feedback on some of them and you can start tracking your progress. So for me, I did my first draft and I believe it was a semifinalist in the Screencraft uh, Fellowship. Um, and then from there, I was like, okay, well, this, it's not terrible, it's, it's okay. So I started to work on it more and I, I tweaked it and I would enter it in different competitions. Um, and it became you know, a second rounder at Austin Film Festival. 
Um, it became a top 15% nickel uh, finalist. So all of these different iterations, and I would take the feedback and I would incorporate it into the script. That's not to say that I would change my vision or my storyline or the characters, but the readers really do take a lot of time to put in good, valuable notes, especially in those top competitions like AFF, Nichols, um, and ScreenGraph too. Um, but I took the notes and I would incorporate it. And you know, it's very easy to get discouraged and disagree with somebody when they when they try to give you notes. Um, and that I think stunts you as a writer. You have to be open. You have to know when to not compromise your vision, but you also have to know when to be open to taking feedback. Um, so I allowed myself to do that process and you know fail for for three years <laughs> with this one story. I was kind of you know mucking about with other ideas too, but eventually um, you know I got notification that this was Baltimore was one of the top three finalists for the UCLA uh, screenwriting competition in the fall of 2018. No, I'm sorry, in the fall of 2017. <laughs> I'm sorry, fall of 2017. And I was absolutely stunned. And uh, then the announcement went out that it won. And uh, from there, um, I had been chatting with a friend of mine about another project I was working on, and my, my phone literally started to blow up. Because, <laughs> I'm not kidding, the, the news the news that I had won the contest had been released by UCLA. And they sent it out to production companies, they sent it out to agencies, they sent it out to development execs. Um, and that news uh, had gone out while I was chatting with my friend who happens to now be my manager. I didn't know he was managing clients at the time because he, he was a producer. Um, but I'm starting to get all of these emails from you know, William Morris and CAA and they're like, congratulations, we'd love to chat with you. And I'm like, oh my God, oh, wow. what do I do? And he's like, what is this, what happened? And uh, I told him and he goes, we, we need to meet, we need to talk. So um, we did and I signed with him and he helped me to organize those meetings and you know, make sure that I, I spoke with the right people and, and that's, that got me signed with my reps today. So you talked about something you called a general. Mm. What, it, what is that? So a general is a meeting that happens between you and a development executive. Um, it's a very informal meeting and it's very easy to get worked up about on your first one if, you, if you've never done it before because you feel like you're, you're being judged. And you are to a certain extent, but you should take it as a very easy informal first date. You're meeting with a production company, you're meeting with a development exec, they've read something, you know, your, your reps, or somehow they've gotten some material that you've written that they like, uh, they're, they're, they've read it, they wanna meet with you. So this is, this is a vetting process for them to see, you know, are you, are you good in a room? Are you uh, a little odd? Maybe they don't wanna hire you. This is, just, <laughs> this is just a way to make sure that, you know, if they go to bat for you, that they're not gonna end up losing their job. So, um, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a meeting between you and the executive. You should always come in with a couple of ideas. Um, you know, they'll, they'll have read either a spec you know, feature film or a spec pilot, um, and they'll have liked it. Go in, always take the water, because they'll offer you water. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so, that's a good tip. That's always good. take the water, because your mouth will get dry. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very informal meeting, and you know, it's, it's easy to say don't put the pressure on yourself um, if you've never done one, um, I didn't bomb my first one, but it's certainly, I got better as I progressed 